Hi, let's chat about comparing the position and accuracy of positions recorded with a GPS receiver versus those recorded from a standard smartphone. How accurate are the coordinates collected with a standard smartphone? And how do they compare to the accuracy of locations recorded by my GPS receiver? In other words, do I really need my GPS receiver any longer if standard smartphones actually have a GPS chip in them? And they also supplement that GPS recorded position based on triangulation off of cell phone towers. To find out, I recently conducted an experiment at a location at the University of Denver. This is a location that I knew would be easily identifiable on a satellite image. I compared the latitude and longitude positions gathered from a Garmin GPS 76 receiver to those from an iPhone 4 and uh, I would like to share my results with you. My GPS dated from 2004 so it wasn't any new model by any means while my iPhone dates from 2010. The iPhone 3G iPhone 3GS and iPhone 4 models use what's called AGPS or assisted GPS which in basic terms accesses an intermediary server when it is not possible to connect directly via satellite indoors for example and this server provides the nearest satellite with additional information to make it possible to more accurately determine a user's position also, the iPhone 3G, iPhone 3GS, and iPhone 4 also use, and perhaps other phones too, use Wi-Fi hotspots or cellular towers to get the most accurate position fast when GPS is not the most convenient method or doable method of location identification. At the time of the experiment, my GPS Garmin 76 was reading nine satellites and gave a horizontal accuracy of 4.38 meters or 14.4 feet with a latitude of 39.68006 degrees north and a longitude of 104.96262 degrees west. My iPhone gave me a position of 39.681944 degrees north and 104.965556 degrees west. The iPhone coordinates were more precise than those from my GPS receiver. The, in other words, they included more significant digits, six, in other words, to the right of the decimal points than the GPS, which had five. But were the iPhone coordinates actually more accurate than that from the Garmin GPS receiver? I mapped these two coordinates using ArcGIS Explorer Online, available at explorer.arcgis.com with an imagery base map. Using the measure tool, I determined that the GPS location was 5.23 meters away from my true position based on the satellite image. This assumes that the satellite image was correct, but remember that imagery is not perfect either, and what is considered correct is a subject worthy of further discussion. The position recorded on my iPhone was 333 meters away from my position as identified on a satellite image. Multiple experiments and then a summary of the results would be proper. At the time of this writing, I only had time to conduct one other experiment 200, me 200 kilometers away at Northeast Junior College in Sterling, Colorado, where I was teaching a GPS and GIS workshop. At that location, my iPhone coordinates were only 40 meters off and my Garmin GPS coordinates were 5 meters off from my position as identified on a satellite image base map. Therefore, given these two experiments, I would conclude at this point that yes, my position as recorded on my GPS receiver were far more accurate than the position as recorded on my iPhone. However, this was not the end of the story as I will explain in a moment. And now for the rest of the story. Specifically, as you know, we're comparing the locational accuracy of a GPS receiver generated GPS coordinate versus that uh, as generated from my iPhone or in, uh, in a case of what you might be working with, you might be using an Android or a Windows phone. The position recorded on my iPhone, as I explained a moment ago, was consistently tens of meters off from the position I recorded with my GPS receiver. Thus far, it appears that my position on my GPS receiver is far more accurate than that from my iPhone. However, as I have given you clues about, this was not the end of the story. What do I mean by that? 
Okay, in the field, I switched to the map view on my phone, and the blue dot marking my current position was not hundreds of meters away, but just a few meters from where I was standing. Hmm. I took a photograph here and mailed it to my Picasso web account. Using the procedures I've written about in a, a previous blog entry on the edcommunity.esri.com site that you can read about. This photograph was geotagged at 39.680000 north latitude, 104.962667 west longitude, which turned out to be only 6 meters, 6.21 meters to be more accurate, uh, away, this time to the southwest, from my position as recorded by the GPS receiver. Interesting. This means that the smartphone was indeed recording an accurate position, but perhaps the app used to capture that position may, as, may have compromised that position. The map I created from ArcGIS Explorer Online, below, as you can see right here on this image, shows my hyperlinked photograph very near to the position where I conducted the experiment, and several blocks to the northwest is the position recorded by the default compass utility in my iPhone. Zooming in, push pin A at the end of the green line points to where I stood at the brick wall on campus, again at the University of Denver. Push pin B, 5.2 meters north-northwest, is the position recorded with my GPS receiver. And push pin C, 6.21 meters to the west-southwest, is the geotagged recorded position in the photograph I took at that spot. Your results will vary with the tools including the types of web GIS, GPS, and smartphone used. For example, a higher-end GPS, such as a Trimble or a Topcon, will surely provide better horizontal accuracy. Also, would my smartphone position have been any better if I had used a GPS app instead of the default compass tool in my phone? Hmm, interesting. All of these technologies will continue to undergo rapid change providing ample opportunity for further experiments. These types of experiments connect mathematics, GI science, including discussion on datums, coordinate systems, and data quality, and geography. How might you turn these activities into teachable moments?